Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the SUP FM podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Luke Trevisi. To my left is going to be my boy, Chris Cheney. What up? And to my right is going to be Lawrence Deloach. Hey, buddies. Oh, my God. I almost said SUP podcast. I don't know. <laughs> I, I heard it. We're heard SUP it. FM, baby. It's brand SUP new. SUP FM, baby. First off, before we go into anything, we got a great interview today with Frank the Butcher. Uh, we had a lot of fun with him. Uh, if you're watching the video version, there's a reason why my, my mic is in the stand right now. <laughs> <laughs> Before we get into that, where can everybody find you guys? Lawrence, you are at uh, LZD325, if I'm that correct. That is correct, sir. And you have a podcast called I Hate This Job? That is correct. I Hate This Job. Uh, that's on all streaming platforms, so check it out. Check out our boy here. Um, I am at not that Cheney, C H E N E Y dot com. You know, I got uh, a website where I got some designs I've done for my personal shit. I got like a three hat. I think you can see in the back right there. So like the hedgehog. I got some T-shirts I've done and uh, by a life New York. Yes, exactly. And I am at <clears throat> Trevisus on Instagram and Twitter. And uh, I don't have anything else going on in my life. <laughs> you have a supreme microphone, sir. There's a lot. I have a supreme microphone that's taken up most of my time, honestly. <laughs> oh we have a lot we wanted so we had a great interview with frank but we still have a couple things that we wanted to talk about today right guys we got some yeah. dunks of course we've got um we've got the nike scandal yep right anything else khaki travis scott's maybe yeah some new ca uh, cactus jack sixes maybe i don't know lawrence was out last week bro what's good with you how are you yeah you how good? are you lawrence i'm living guys i'm in, i'm happy to be back i'm so mad i miss the interview with Farrell, uh, she's she's amazing. And, you know, once again, I was kicking myself for missing because I had a lot of fucking questions I wanted to ask her that I didn't get to ask her. But you know what? I'm here for the Frank interview and that matters. So, um, yeah, right. I'm good. You know, happy to be with you guys. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, let's just dive in right into this Nike thing, because I think that's kind of on the forefront of everyone's mind. You know, we've already had. Things like the trophy room shit go down. This whole uh, sneaker business becomes a dumpster fire of not letting people who want sneakers get them. I mean, how do we really feel? Are we surprised or like what's the initial thoughts? Man, I'm not surprised. I'm really not. What about you guys? Uh, I, I'm, I, I want you guys to get out all your thoughts because I'm going to go on one of these like Stephen A. Smith, Shannon Sharp rants in a second about classism racism that's involved in this whole story okay so if you want to talk about it first fine but i'm going to say my shit so okay ahead. so i'm going to add a little bit more to that um yeah i'm not surprised by it and also you could see the thoughts of our listeners on the discord which there's going to be a link in the bio now Chris, right. what do you think about it? i mean i just i so now, I don't have all the facts, and when I speak on things, I generally don't, so I might be wrong in a couple of things, but it seems like that Nike knew that this this da uh, this 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 lady's son was doing this, uh, and their excuse to why it was allowed is that she was so far away from actually being able to help him, like she was such a high executive, I guess, or some bullshit. It just screams bullshit all the way around, like... How can you be a, a vice president of an entire continent's business for a company and then you let your son have your entire stock in your garage? Hmm. Like we got kids out here that are fucking fighting for sneakers and then you're letting your son use your credit card to buy entire stocks. Uh, taking away from the sneakers shit, I guess. Like they were taking away sneaker stock for this kid. Hmm. But I don't know how much of this shit is true, you know, and I don't know how much of these screenshots I've seen of wild shit being doctored or just like misrepresented from another thing. But I mean, Lawrence, take it away, bro. Like, just go for it. This whole thing is just fucking absurd, if you ask me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, it shows that a this era of uh, of this whole quote unquote sneaker, you know, uh, consumerism is driven by a clout. But B, the fact that if this is, you know, a lot of this is true, which it seems like it, it is, the fact that the mother had such a high position within Nike and the way that this kid was able to fund his, he had so much insider trading. Yeah. He had so much insider information. He had to the point where he created a, uh, it's a, not a discord, but a, a cook group. Yeah. You know, he had a cook group where he's charging people money 
for, you know, to cook, to for information. The fact that the mother can give this kid the information of what's at these, you know, these factory stores, you know, the, the fact that we have we look at the way black kids and minorities and Spanish kids and they line up in the hood and they're fucking killing each other for a hundred dollar profit. And this white kid is able to, in fact, have a company bankrolled under his vice president mother who's moving up every 18 months within this company. But we get looked at and labeled as thugs and and fucking you know get a job you fucking loser and all this shit and and it goes to show you that the fact that we are and it go and it's not just you know blacks and it's a lot of people we're fighting for scraps in this shit yeah and this kid comes up on six air mags he fucking the, the audacity like you're getting you're getting so much um, you're getting so much love and you're making so much money from based off your mother's tit and you still have to figure out a way to clout chase. Like, you know, he is out here, you know, had the phone, the cell phone with the in the mother's name, using the mother's credit card. It, it is fucking bullshit. And, and the mother knew what she was doing. Nike was complicit in this. They knew. They knew they just didn't say anything until that article exposed this kid for what he was a yeah. fucking clout chasing loser. For sure. Yeah. I don't know how I in, you know, things like, you know, the BLM, the even like the, the first time around, second time around, you always learn like these little things. Why is it that white people always like leave on their own accord? They always resign. They never get fired. There's never any shame in it. You know what I mean? She was able to just go, sorry, guys, I'm going to leave now. And it like wasn't a big deal at first. You know, I, I'm going to say this and, and that that definitely is so true Chris because at the end of the day and I totally agree with this I mean granted now the kid I think he's un, no one's gonna fuck with him in terms of giving him a plug because right. you know he's so hot right now but now the mother if you don't think that she's gonna get a job at some company Adidas Reebok you know Converse it's probably Converse. gonna be in the same family yeah. she she's going to get she's going to fucking get another job at you know within a company making good money because she's quote unquote valuable so but what i'm saying to you is you go into so many of these inner cities and you look at these kids who are like i said i look and i watch these kids line up and fucking we've seen the videos we put the videos on our social media where they are fighting fucking fighting and i say they're fighting for their lives because this is the only way that they feel that they can make money but they don't have the connections that this kid had no so you you get you you look at it and you're like fuck man it, it just goes to show you how how life is if if these if we're fighting or these kids are like i said you see them online for dunks and, and you see we've seen the video kids is, no you ain't if i don't get in no one's getting in meanwhile this kid's got his his mom who's making six figures giving him a credit card and, and and hooking him up with you know she was she was influential she uh she handled sneakers she was you know she was working yeah that's what i'm saying i think he pretty much i think he was literally buying sneaker stock <clears throat> wouldn't be shocked yeah now all this is sort of you know these accusations the ones i just made i like i don't know if it's true or not i've read different things different places i mean i'm not as well informed as this kid was with like his mother told him but i mean i don't if they're doing it right in front of our face, dude. Like, you can't have something so egregious like what Michael Jordan's son did to us and then have this immediately follow and not like, and no one's really checking it. This is sort of like the Epstein thing where, like, they're like, he killed himself. It's like, no, clearly something is up and you guys are just laughing at us in, in front of our faces. Cause how many other kids do you think are like this kid that have all this access and are buying all the stock and we're over here just getting the, um, oh, your entry wasn't selected screen? Chris, you can't, you can't compare. Don't compare Epstein to this. <laughs> well, no, just <laughs> you're about to be a seltzer sponsor. You got to learn how to talk like one. <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude. No, but you know what I'm saying? I though. understand it's... what you're saying. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, I'm. I listen. I, I, I am. I am upset. And when I say upset, I'm not upset to the point where I'm like, man, fuck, fuck Nike. Never doing it again. But I, I'm like. This is the culture that that has been fostered and it has been it's been celebrated where we you go on Instagram and if he kept his mouth shut and yeah. he didn't he would have continued to be in this situation. And who knows how the magnifying glass was on Marcus Jordan. It was on my it was on Jordan for for what he was doing with the trophy rooms. But now we're at a point where 
this has been exposed within Nike. It, it's it's been exposed. We see, but once again, because the product is moving, and I feel like Nike is always just like, man, this is good publicity, man. Who gives a fuck, man? You know, people still go because Nike themselves are fucking resellers. Yeah. They're they, you know what I mean? So why why do they care? So basically, it's like you get a scrap here and there, you get a scrap here and there, and then every and then the, the people within Nike are fucking eating. You know what's crazy is like this is a great example of how trickle down economics doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Like how going to the point of like, so you buy a sneaker now and you resell it at the end of the day, you only get twenty dollars because it's only one sneaker, one sale, one shoe. And it's the only one you have. You can't, um, you know, help raise the price of how it goes because you hold a lot of stock. You know what I mean? Like it's fucked up where this kid, he's on the upper echelon of this shit. He's up there making racks, bro. Mm -hmm. But then like Lawrence, like you're saying, it's like this trickle down shit doesn't work. Like, cause once it gets down to us, it's, it's no longer even a thing. And the people that even want it can't even get it. Yeah. I don't know, man. It's like sometimes if, if, Al, you and I are going to sound like such old men on this episode. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's like, it's Fuck not it. how it used to be. Yeah. I don't know, it, man. It, it isn't how it used to be, but and we and you know we can we'll say this every episode. I mean, I can say I this know. shit every episode, and it's it's just that there's a, a error that that I we grew up in, and I came up in where it was not, it was never like this, man. It was it was never this bad, and you know, and I and I once again, I wasn't part of the era where kids were getting killed for starter jackets and you know and you got shot for jordan jordan's by the time i was like able to purchase my own jordan i don't remember too many kids getting robbed you know for for jordan's or killed but maybe because i grew up in new york and i didn't grow up in bumpfuck michigan or some other shit no disrespect to our mission michigan listeners or some shit shout but, out to michigan mm -hmm. yeah but i you know i, I like you said chris every, i can i can tell you before 2000 and 15 i think i have a story for every sneaker that i purchased and it was man i waited on this line or oh man you know i remember doing this and then after that it became uh well man i got really lucky on this raffle or man i don't even know how the yeah. fuck you know what i mean it's like there's never there's no more stories behind this this thing that people love it's now it's oh man i hit on sneakers oh man this is, I'm, i i went over for 77 and finally motherfucker hit something but the reason why is because of this whole culture because everyone assigns a dollar sign a value to it mm -hmm. something i don't know it's fucking stupid yeah, i don't know man it it and yeah I, we gotta. We should probably move on to the topic because we're yeah, just gonna go down about, this rabbit let's hole. Let's talk about another thing that we didn't get this week. Let's talk <laughs> about Supreme. <laughs> yeah, and it, still to this this example, uh, I don't know a single person that hit on Supreme. Yeah, I don't know anybody. Nobody in our Discord really hit. I think ACR had a pair. I don't know how he did it, but he has a pair. I think. Yeah, man. I mean, did how did you guys? Did you guys try for all four? Like, what was the story here? <laughs> I want. Uh, yeah, go Luke. Luke. no, okay. go ahead, Luke. All right. I went on my I went on desktop 11 o'clock in the morning. I was land land plugged in. I was trying office to office ping, in. not office ping, home ping. <laughs> but <clears throat> I get in there. I go, you know, I get to the the, the sneaker page. All that's left are 10 and a half. I go in there and I just try to get a grab up any 10 and a half. Nothing just kept booting me out. And at some point I just started laughing because it felt like they were just fucking with me at some point, you know, where it was just like, it's back in stock. Now it's sold out. It's back in stock. It's sold out. I, um, in, 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 in all seriousness, I was going to be like, maybe it is the office. Maybe now that I'm here, I'll get something. Cause you guys know, I'm not like a, you know, run to Supreme side at 11. I'm not even like a wake up at 10. You know what I mean? Like I, I can't mm -hmm. even do none of this shit. I'm not like, it's not me. But I tried and you know at eleven I hit refresh and then like the site like crashed. Mm -hmm. Then it then like it's, it's still ten. It refreshed and it sold out. I'm like, what is this? What is this? What, what is this? And I'm like <laughs> I'm looking at try, I'm like, I get bots now. Like I like I all I did was click oh, refresh twice and the shit was gone. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um well, Lawrence, you grab anything from the drop at all or no, I didn't grab anything. I I was able to cart. I, I had I had it in a cart, filled in all my information, uh, hit process payment, 
And I was waiting for it to say, you know, your order's been submitted. And then it's soon, like I like I said, I had the brown in my car, had a size 12. And then I uh, want to hit process payment. It it lagged a little bit and then it said sold out. So sold out in the cart. Uh, I was a little disappointed, but uh, you know, I I, I just kind of I, I saw, like I said, I saw today, actually, I was in Williamsburg and I saw a, a young Asian lady wearing the brown pair. And you know what? It didn't sting that bad. It did make me a little upset, but it didn't sting like it wasn't like, oh, man, you know, and and I'm kind of mad at myself because the whole time I had a game plan of the green. Mm-hmm. And then I saw on um so, the Supreme Community, they were doing the sellout times in, 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 in Europe. And the, the green size 12 sold out like it was like the, the fourth fastest thing to go. So it kind of scared me off. But in actuality, I think the the blue and the black were probably the most abundant pairs. Ooh. And um, I mean, like I said, man, it's not even that serious, man. I'm thinking about selling a majority of my shit, but I could have used the extra six hundred dollars to be happy. And, and I think <laughs> from what I'm hearing, there's no Nike uh, drop. And this was it. Mm-hmm. So if this was it, as the stock boys say, to the moon. Ooh, <laughs> it's got the L endorsement. He likes the shoe. He no, the shoe. no, no, no. I said if there's no Nike drop to the moon, bro, then the prices mm-hmm. are going to the moon. Right. It's not. I'm, listen, I'm not. At the end of the day, I can I can move on. But yeah, it's something about like I like I said, I I don't know, man. Supreme knows what they're doing. You know, I saw in the, the I heard in the Brooklyn store there was only like hundred pairs or some shit like Supreme knows what the fuck they're doing with this drop, man. Yeah. Yeah. They fucking backdoor friends and family, and then a couple people get a couple pairs of sneakers. Somehow. We got news of a uh <clears throat> before we get into this. Whoa, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm dying over here. Uh <clears throat> Uh, before we get into this interview, we also got a uh, little news from the Travis Scott camp. Of course, me being the Travis Scott guy, I have to I have to bring it up. There's like sixes. They look like khaki. Do we care? What do we think? Um, the, Well, I think we've sort of talked about Travis, uh, Travis Scott as a st- stock before. And his value, I think, is starting to decline. The hype <laughs> around him has uh, lowered. Um, I mean, this was a revered. <laughs> Don't do that, L. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. And I'll go ahead, Chris. The the hype isn't as much as it used to be there. Okay. I mean, Al, I don't know if you're you. <clears throat> so you think this is going to be easier to cop than? No, no, not saying that. I'm not saying okay. that. It's not making the noise because basically the first time around we saw that photo and everyone was like, oh shit. <clears throat> this time around, I know it's a re-release and I know he's got a couple other projects in between, but it's like everyone's going like, oh cool. It's not like that, oh, shit, that we initially had when we saw the olive one, you know? Yeah, it does feel like you guys know the drill. We're going to we're going to try for all of them and then we're going to get resale is going to be like 600 right off the bat. You know, I I disagree. I don't think you, Chris, you just said like the hype is in around. And I don't know if you're talking about just this particular color and model, but we saw Trav with uh, with the uh, fragment. Trav Lowe's and people oh, are yeah. people are still going. I mean, it's still Travis Scott. I mean, he still is able to sell and move shit. And and like you said, a six is the the hype around a six. It will never be as great as a, a Jordan one or four. Facts, facts, facts. So mm-hmm. I, once again, I think people and I and, and then another thing I will also say is the first model of a collaboration always usually tends to be the best color or the one that you know is like oh man so people will enjoy these will they enjoy them as much as the first sixes it's just like the don c2s people fucking were going crazy for the blues the tans came out ah you know the the chicago off whites people went crazy for those the the unc ones people enjoy but you know so what i'm saying is yeah the second drop is usually doesn't have as much hype but I still will say that when these drop, people are going to fucking these are going to fly, obviously, and people are going to, you know, fight to the death. for. The yeah, I stuff. definitely was not trying to say that what I was trying to say. And this is a rerun shoe. So it's not like, you know, like you said, like the first solo, it's always going to be the one. But it's hard for me to let you slide on saying that, like the hype around Travis, although it's still very high, isn't it's declining now. 
He's not like before when something happened because there wasn't as much of an abundance as Travis Scott product out. It yeah. meant more. You the more product is more accessible now. But the more product he comes out with, the more and there's also no gap. That's the other thing. So like with Virgil, the 20, all these rumors like that the gap between the 10 releasing and these other 10 is great enough for people are going like, oh, shit, because he's also still making noise in other places. Travis has not had a uh, really stop. There's never been a break. And it's always been sort of constant, which is also good as far as like, you know, just staying relevant and having a presence. But also now it's like, how long are we going to go like, oh, shit, another Travis Scott? Like, it's not going to be there for much longer. I disagree. I think as long as Trav stays relevant, you know, and and it's for and musically or uh, entertainment wise, Travis. Yeah. Travis Scott shoe is still going to have some type of value. People are still going to go crazy for it. And I, I kind of disagree, like. I don't I don't think that that's going to stop with him. What like I'm, it's it's okay. not going to stop. What I'm saying is I'm starting to see like the, you know. So mm. when you when Trav said when if they say, hey, we're going to release these fragment one Travis Scott, you know, collab, you think, yeah. oh, people are going to be like, the hype is not going to be there. The hype will be at all time high. No, but that's fra- that's also a fragment. That's also yeah. a whole nother element to it. That's, but what I'm it's still Travis Chris's Scott. Brain. It's still Travis Scott attached to it. I'm saying it's it's still fragment attached to it. Okay, if Trav released another Jordan One, if he released a Chicago Jordan One, you don't think the fucking height would be through the roof? Like that's, that's Chicago. It's a Chicago. That's no? Chicago. Okay. So okay, so if Travis Scott released the orange Jordan One, oh, would the fucking okay. yeah sign me the fuck up? I'm in. That, yeah, that's sure, what I'm saying. But they also got orange dunks though, so it's like if someone misses, it's like I can get the orange dunk. But that's not gonna happen because people are still gonna say, "Oh, it's fucking Travis Scott." I still need a pair. Tra- it, he has this. He has the fucking. They, they gave him the baton and he's running with it. Like who else is out there? Drake ain't. Drake is not. People not going crazy for no Drake sneakers. You know what I'm saying? People like fuck with Virgil, but Travis still the guy that when they want to push something or they want to put a new model on or they want to fucking generate he He's still going to do it, whether it was 2019, 2020 or 2021. It, that's just who it is. Where's that right now with Travis Scott? I think a good middle ground to sort of agree upon is like, you know, when you were throwing out those examples, like you had to add something to it. And I'm not saying that like. It, it's because he's always going to fly and like we're no, no one can disagree with that shit. It's Travis Scott's going to go. But in order to bring it back to the high hype level, mm-hmm. you got to do it with a Chicago color. You got to do it with a fragment. You got to do it with a uh, PlayStation. You got to do it with all the it has to be a third party now to keep the hype as high as it is. Uh, OK, I, that I mean, yeah, but like I said, if there's another Jordan one that Travis does that doesn't even have the 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 collab effort behind it or even the chicago colorway it's still going to people are still going to yes. fucking value it for sure mm-hmm. I, I can agree with that he has the ability to sell shit without you know it, without putting hiroshi aside uh, beside him or virgil beside him it's yeah he he still has that that juice right now so yeah he does um, I mean, you know one other thing before we just throw it to the frank interview uh you know now that we're in march March is a, uh, you know, a pivotal moment, at least in uh, streetwear holidays with Air Max Day. I haven't really seen much other than the bacon photos coming back up. Uh, Have you guys, it's this, seems, I feel like they're, they're usually in full advertisement by now. There's a LeBron, there's a Lakers colored Air Max 95 that's oh, supposed yeah, to release. Yeah, I did see that. That looked pretty good. Yeah, and I think there's almost those also like those Air Max 2090s. I think I saw a couple colorways in, but I, I haven't seen like a major like poster, photo, marketing campaign around it. I don't know. Like, uh, I don't. Know. Maybe it's because Air Max Day uh, just isn't worth it for them anymore. I mean, also last year there was like that timing with the because COVID right. fucked a bunch of shit up, and I mean. I only bring this up just because, you know, we saw I saw some more bacon photos, but I feel like we were talking about the bacon two years ago. It was like February last year. We were. Well, I know we talked about it last year because we all thought it was going to drop in or at least we were, you know, assuming. Mm -hmm. But I feel like two years ago, I swear to God, I saw a bacon photo. I think with COVID last year and like like Luke was saying, COVID last year, the year before, if I'm correct, it was like that shitty city pack, like Tokyos and yeah, yeah, yeah. Seoul. Yeah, 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 and the Shanghai's. And, and the Shanghai's. And I think that flopped a little bit. And then, you know, this this year, 
Uh, I don't know how big of a role COVID's going to play with, you know, because every Air Max day, you know, there's usually the festivities. There's the the events. You know, I can remember going to an event. I, I'm not sure where where it was at. It might have been Jacob Jav. Might have been somewhere. It was a few years ago. And they had it was fucking beautiful. I mean, granted, you know, but at the same time, I think the bacons and I think the fact that so many people are used to just not getting anything from Air Max Day, Maybe. that it kind of just doesn't people aren't going crazy, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. They'll go crazy right. for the bacons, but that's going to be about it. I don't know. Well, well, you know, we'll be tuning into that, trying to make sure if there's anything that does come up. I just really feel like they usually announce more shit by now, but let's just, let's just, you know, stay tuned, try to pay attention. Um, you know, before we throw it to Frank, please follow us at sub podcast NYC at LZD three, two, five at Trevisus at three meanie at not that Cheney. You know, we got a discord, we got, um, a phone number that you can call and leave a voicemail. We haven't got one of those in a while. So if you want to hit us up, I think I kind of scared you guys by saying that you, I'm not, we're not going to listen to the dumb ones, but please just call in, leave us a note. And like, you know, whatever it is, like, we'll just play, I'll pay play now. I don't care, whatever. Um, and if there's anything else, you know, let's just throw it to Frank. Video, yeah, videos on YouTube. Uh, anything else? Nah, just keep listening. Give us five stars on, on iTunes. Give us a great rating or a nice review. Um, tell us you love us. Join the Discord. We're here. We ain't going nowhere. Can't stop. Yeah. Won't stop. This is, I guess. All right. So here we go. Sup FM interviews Frank the Butcher. Sup FM, here we are, uh, Lawrence, Luke, and Chris, and with special guest, returning guest, friend of the show, you know him from Concepts, you know him from his work independently on his brand, A Business as Usual, you might know him from his music, you definitely know him as a streetwear legend, OG at this point, my big bro, Frank the Butcher. Hey, what's going on, Frank? How are you, buddy? Peace, peace. How's everybody? Yo, congratulations Good, on your new branding, too. The oh, thank you, man. Thank you. I know I uh, I had a couple manic episodes where I was texting you and showing you shit where I was like, is this good? I don't know if this is good. Like, what's happening? Uh, where you landed is great. I'm always a fan of your work. You already know. Oh, thank you, Frank. Man. I appreciate that, man. Um, So let's just get a quick update from you. I know it's been a while since we last spoke to you on mic. Um, you know, you're at Reebok right now. Uh, I believe your title is head of storytelling. Yeah. Yeah. Head of storytelling. Yep. For pro- for product and for brand. Mm-hmm. Um, I, you know, you don't have to go into it too much just to get this elephant out of the way. We know Reebok sort of in a weird place where it's sort of like floating as far as a brand where it's going. Um, if you just have any thoughts on that before we continue. Yeah, I think I think. Um, n- number one is not a negative. You know, what I mean, I think that what's happening happens. It's happened to a lot of brands before they've seen their full potential, you know. Um, mm-hmm. You look at the brands that VF owns and other brands, Timberland, you know, when Timberland was independent, you know, and then they were sold this, you know, it, it's, we can't, we don't know what's, what the future lies, but we do know that we're still moving forward, you know, um, so nobody sees it as a real negative, you know, um, we've been here before. Yeah, yeah. You know, especially Reebok, there's people still in the building that were there when, when, when Adidas acquired Reebok, so you know, while while outward facing, it seems kind of crazy. And yeah, it's a little bit, you know, there's, um, you know, but at the same time, you know, there's so much potential. Reebok, Reebok has such a fan base, you know what I mean? People really, really have a, a connection to the brand. You yeah. you included, you know, and, and myself included, you know, I don't just work there. Um, you know, if you, if you know about what I've done in the past, I've worked with Reebok numerous times, you know collaborate personal collaborations you know so mm, there's a relationship there there's a, a meaningful connection there and, and and you know me and my crew just want to see the brand get over the hump and, and, and keep pushing forward you know yeah for sure man now um, frank let me ask you a question when you say like storytelling what if you can like elaborate a little bit about the storytelling aspect of what you're doing sure um every brand has a continuity in their storytelling right it's like even it doesn't matter what where the story is being told. Um, it could be in athletics. It could be a lifestyle. It could be a just you know uh, editorial style. Um, there's like there's a tone and there's a there's a connectivity, a continuity. There's a there's a DNA of who we are in in our storytelling, um, and that's what I'm here to manage. I'm here to uh, you know oversee stories and help shape stories in a way that really reflect who Reebok wants to be. 
um, and, you know, making sure that that personality, that tone, that intent is present across all our storytelling channels, whether that's social, product, lifestyle, PR, um, everywhere where there's a place to, you know, sp to speak from the brand's perspective, um, I'm there to make sure that we, we're on tone. I was going to say a lot, because a lot of the times, like, you know, and I know when, when, especially like when you work at somewhere like Reebok or Adidas or whatever, a lot of the times you try to sometimes go to the nostalgic uh, piece of, you know, the brand. Because, you know, Reebok has a great history with guys like Shaq and, and you know, D Brown and Sean Kemp. Are you into trying to create new stories or do you like, like try to mix in the old stories with new stuff or? It's a combination. It's a combination. Uh, obviously, our heritage stories and our, you know, the, the our archive stories are are exciting parts of our history, and you know we draw from them. You know, inspired by them, and and, and there's a lot of celebrating of that. But we we all know here. I know that this podcast, you know, you guys are, are knowledgeable and understand that we need to also blaze forward with new things, new and exciting things, right? Innovative things, whether it's innovating on a story, innovating on a product, um, we need to continue to grow pushing forward, but at the same time, make sure that we water those plants, right? We, 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 tend, to, we tend to our garden, right? The things that um, people love, the things that people know us for, it's, it's just finding the right balance between our heritage and the future. That's, that's always the, the job to do. Like the uh, the D Browns you guys just did the Pump Omni twos, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know. and even um you can go back to the Margella shit where they you guys gave him that Asian cut on the toe. That's like telling a new story there. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly it. You know, when I say storytelling, it's not just literal copy or you know content. It's it's that too. You know, um, taking our classic footwear, taking our iconic footwear, our, our part of our icon family, like the classic leather and the club C and you know telling that kind of story right like you know partnering with a brand with such heritage and such a dna and finding that way to um you know infuse our dnas you know where you can see both of our personalities there you can see what we did and how it's special um but it still celebrates who we are and celebrates who they are in, in, a, in an authentic way and that's why that project in particular did so well yeah for sure man um you know we're coming on uh, a year of corona and I, you, you and i have been talking off mic you know yeah. just checking in talking about like how yeah, things have changed um mm -hmm. just from a big corporate entity because you know like me working with the a life guys it's you know there's only five of us but we still have our issues uh i mean what kind of adjustments have you had to make with such a huge corporation with like so many people involved i, th I think like like most companies uh we got to be mindful on how we spend Right. You know, yeah. the, our consumer has changed. That's something else that we're really keeping a critical eye on. Right. Like, you know, if my job is storytelling, if my job is trying to find a narrative that um, will be attractive and exciting and meaningful to our consumer. Right. And pull them in. I got to know who the consumer is. And we've all changed in the past year. You know what I mean? Luke is not the same. Luke don't even look the same. Look, his mic is all different. Not yeah. like Luke is <laughs> one person. <laughs> You, got the you hype know what mic. I mean? We're, you got the hype mic now, but you know what I mean? We're, we're not, none of us are the same. None of us buy things the same. None of us have the same taste. We've evolved, you know, um, you know, at gunpoint, you know what I mean? We've evolved, you know, things have made us really take a look at ourselves and, you know, consumer habits and spending, spending habits have changed. Now we got to figure out the next way to, um, you know, do business in this evolving world. So, uh, we're forever going to be altered. Everyone's going to be forever altered, but that's the way life is, you know? Uh, but it forces us to find new and innovative ways to be successful. Frank, I'm I'm one of those guys that I'm like, I'm in my mid thirties and, you know, I'm, I'm kind of the same way. I'm like, shit, the game, the, the sneaker culture, everything's evolving, man. But sometimes I get frustrated because I'm like, it evolves negatively sometimes because I feel like, you know, back in the days, it was kind of like people were helping each other out. And now it's just like no one cares. Everyone's trying to get to that dollar profit. And I get a little frustrated. I know you as a, a creator and you've been in the game for years. How much has the game changed for you? It's, it's, it's a whole different game. It's mm -hmm. a total change. You know what I mean? It's, it's an ultimate. It, I mean, it's, it, this is like a living, breathing organism. You know what I mean? And, and. It, it's going to reflect what we feed it, 
you know, and this is what we've been feeding it. We've been positioning brands and trends in a way that, you know, make people feel like that's all it is. That's all there was, you know, and, and that's not what it was when I came into this, you know, I'm, I'm older than y'all, but I, I know you guys, you know, mid thirties, you know, you know what it is, you know, um, there was, there was a different thing going on. There was a passion for product. There was a passion for, you know, having things that others haven't, you know, didn't have, right. And, and not in a way of, of, you know, uh, you know buying the, the most luxurious high and most expensive, but it was just about, you know, finding those things that connected with you. When I grew up, you know, there were guys that were into certain shoes and there were other guys that were into certain shoes. Like we didn't have to have everything, right? It was more like what connected with your personality. You know what I mean? Like, yo, my man is the Bo Jackson King. You know, my man, my man, Jack, he's a real person that I grew up with. Jack was the Air Max 95 King. Like, you know, there was a, it was a more purposeful, you know, intent, you know, he, he was a fan of a shoe and he, and he, and he went out of his way to, you know, to, to find that product. But today, it's more about commerce. And I understand that, you know, I, I totally understand that, you know, I understand that there, there is an opportunity to be had, there is a, a supply and demand component to be had. Um, and this is, you know, this is what it is, this is what free market is, but at the same time, a little bit of the romance is gone, you know, it's a little more cutthroat, you know, and yeah. I don't, I don't see the fun in that. I don't, and I'm not saying every, you know, I even understand the the frequency of fun that some people have and I'm in a different place in my life but it doesn't seem really that much fun you know what I'm saying <laughs> I haven't had it's, fun with sneakers in like five years <laughs> it seems like there's a lot of anxiety attached to purchasing footwear I mean, you know how many people are upset about not getting a certain shoe or you know you know 1101 everything is sold out it's like there's such an anxiety attached to it man you know yeah. and at the end of the day um, all you do is end up with a lot of stuff. You know what I'm saying? And if that's the goal, if the goal is to accumulate as much stuff as possible, then you're off to the races, I guess. But um, eventually you figure out that it's, that's not the thing that makes you happy. And then you have to figure out the next step. So it's a lot going out there. Kids are getting hurt. You know, there's people doing tall types of schemes and drastic things to get shoes. And, um, you know, it just doesn't seem like that much fun. Yeah. You know. Speaking of schemes and stuff like that, and you, you kind of mentioned how just this game is like so whack. And you know, we had a we had two situations, or I would call them this week. And Frank, you can, you know, talk about as much as you like or you know, as little as you like, but we had the the whole Nike executive scandal that happened with you know us uh Ann Herbert of Nike and her son. She funded his son's business and and he made it seem like he was getting it from the mud. And and it just goes to show you that, like, I, I, it's on a deeper level to me when it comes to inner city and how inner city kids are treated in terms of reselling and how, you know, a kid from, you know, the, the Burbs, you know, his mom funds his organization. Frank, what do you what do you see or how do you feel when you see some shit like that? I mean, it's, it's like we said, that's that's the result. That's the result of being driven by, you know, an obsession, right? And, and defining your worth by product, defining your worth by exclusivity, defining your worth by, you know what I mean, o owning these things. And, and it drives people to do things, you know, I mean, it drives people to go really far. You know, obviously, I only know what you guys know via the news. I don't know these people and I don't want to you know what I mean, speculate at all, but, you know, me working inside of a footwear company, we understand that there's levels of accountability. Um, there's certain things we can and cannot do. Uh, and I couldn't imagine that that scenario, if presented in the way that it's presented, the way that we're seeing it, just, just looking at it, you know, as an outsider, um, I couldn't imagine that scenario not being flagged for conflict of interest, you know, um, I work at a footwear company. My daughter's 24 years old. So if she wanted to, you know what I mean, start doing some things, start moving some shoes and, you know, I, I would steer clear, you know, um, you know, that's, it's just, to me, it's common sense, but, you yeah. know, like you said, Lawrence, right? Like there's a, there's a, um, there's a privilege component, you know what I'm saying? There's a privilege component, you know, that, that um, obviously other people don't have, you know, and, and, mm -hmm. and it, it this, again no judgment but this reeks of that privilege you yeah. know um, yeah frank i want to go into something real quick you recently uh speaking on things 
that people have that others don't. Uh, you just got a key to the city. Can you talk to me about that? <laughs> yeah, what was that yeah. like? Oh, I appreciate you bringing that up. I, that meant a lot. That that means a lot. Um, you know, I've been blessed to be able to, uh, you know, do some things and, and, and have some fun and gain some experiences. And a lot of that has been tied to um, the way we communicate, right? Like internet and, you know, and started with blogs and, and so on and so forth. That's really been the place that, you know, I've found success in, the, in that world of connectivity, like, like all of us here. So getting the key to the city is a little different, you know what I mean? Like it's more tangible. You know, I can show my parents and there's a, there's a different level of, of uh, understanding. You know what I mean? There's a, there's a deeper connection. And, you know, this is a city that um, it wasn't all fun growing up. You know what I mean? It wasn't all fun. It wasn't all, um, there's a lot of, you know, it's a lot of holy burial grounds in my city where I've lost people, including my little brother at 21. So, you know, receiving this key to the city, the way I thought of it was that, um, kind of full circle you know and and with my family is now in in the city's log permanently for something positive you know what i mean so I you know, know all that ancestry and all that shit all that you know what i mean like you know 100 years I ago to look back and not only see my criminal record or my brother's death or you know whatever whatever things that just kind of hang out when you know as little particles of, of who you used to be you know we're in the books baby you know what i mean so that's something positive and, and having my kids to see it and, and being able to call my parents and let, letting them know um, that the city that I was, you know, born and raised in, you know, recognize my, my efforts. I mean, that's, that's cool, cool shit. It means a lot. And, and, and that's what I'm talking about, man. It's like, you know, I've had basements, you know, basement full of shoes, man. And I'm, and I'm telling you that um, this key to the city, you know, it it, it 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 fills me you know what i mean it it really yeah. it really fills yeah. the spirit more than what a shoe can do you know i'm just gonna let you know that um there are things out there that you know that that mean mean much more than that than that you know and this was one of them so these things do exist is what you're saying yeah they do they do <laughs> they just do. checking they do. wait no frank how how big is the key that's a good um, question it's, it's like uh it's probably like six inches long and what's cool too, I went to um, a trade school growing up. It's no longer there, but it's a, a it was a Worcester vocational high school. It was in the middle of downtown Worcester. It looked like a bunch of factory buildings, you know, auto part, auto, you know what I mean, trade and paint and all that. And I was in graphic design. It used to call it graphic communication. Then I got in some trouble when I left the school. Um, and then in recent years, they moved the whole school, built a whole brand new facility in that school, the new Worcester Vogue, it's called Worcester Tech now, made the key. So it's cool, man. It's like even the school I went to, you know, wow. has a connection to the key to the city. So really good. Really cool. Now, you know? now Frank, you said something. You were like, yo, I, I could have a, a basement full of shoes and the key is more important. And I respect that. But you've collaborated and done some wonderful sneakers, Frank. So let's uh, let's 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 start saying which one, which collab was your favorite, man? Oh, which collab was my favorite? I, I really. Um, I you know, anytime really Frank in... works with me, Frank, I got this one for you. Anytime Frank <laughs> works with me, you know, it's sort of like I think that's when he sort of he gets the touch of the youth and he sort of like his eyes open up a little bit, you know. Yeah. Chris is my conduit into youth. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we you need know? a new conduit, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, conduit. Um, I really, I really like my uh, the the forum hustlers crest project. Is that's one of the, my favorites? You know, that shoe me means a lot. Growing up, seeing it, it was a, it was just a wild shoe. It was, it was like you know, of legend, you know, the hustlers and it was uh, over a hundred dollars in the, you know, late, late eighties, early nineties. It was, it was really, it was really something different and special when I got the opportunity to, to bring that back with that crest that was out of, you know what I mean? It, it wasn't even, they didn't even have it on record. They didn't even know what I was, what I was pitching um, that. And they just relaunched the forum just recently. So that's top of mind. That's one of my favorites right there. Yeah. I was going to um, say, obviously, Frank they just yeah. came back out with it. So, uh, you know, mm -hmm. this is around the time maybe where you can be like, Hey guys, you remember me? <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Nah, that's over, bro. <laughs> <laughs> to, to be honest, I, I don't, I don't see myself doing any more collaborations. You know what I mean? Um, I'm not it, saying, it, I mean, go, go ahead. Sorry. 
No, I'm not saying that, you know, it, it's not possible, but that's not something that, that I'm, I'm pursuing and like that. I think there's a whole generation of people killing it right now. You know what I mean? Like, handle yeah. that. I'm right here. Plus, you're more on the inside now. You became sort of like you evolved like out of it, but more into it. You had a weird journey where like usually people on the inside try to get out. You're on the outside and sort of got in and like, you know, settled, not settled like yeah. with whatever, well, but find, you were like... I, yeah, I had to find some stability. It was yeah. really what was happening. You know, you got to think like it's you're talking to me now, and, and and the things that people do now seem very normal, seem very accepted. Um, when I started in 2005, 2006, my career wasn't it wasn't a position for me. It was it wasn't, you know what I mean. We 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 as in you know my contemporaries around that time, we were all shaping our jobs we didn't know what 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 we were doing some people did some people didn't and the var varying scale in between right like trying to figure things out so this is where i landed and when i realized that um you know when i when i realized that there was more to get and there was more stability to have you know i'm, I'm a you know i was a teen parent so my kids were young um i've been married for a long time so i had to make sure that i wasn't just uh distracted by all the you know, all the shiny, all the excitement, you know what I mean? Especially in the era when I was doing it, right? All the hype releases and all the all the fun and all that. And, and really understand that, you know, there's a career to be had, you know, and I have to keep going in order to, to push my family forward and get these kids through college and all that. So that's my, it was my choice to try to find more stability. And at the same time, you know, we're on the ground you guys included we're on the ground you know we we see things we hear things we have experiences we have perspective that when sharpened right and when 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 dissected and when distilled it's really effective man like when you're in the building when you have these perspectives and that was really um my, the next part of my life right i take all that all that shit that i was doing all, all these ideas all these strategies that i was putting together to try to i mean you can ask chris right from puma to all these projects i was here trying to I map it out i sit and i figure out oh, yeah. and then i and then i put it into play that's five departments in a in a company right yeah. so yeah. what it does it gives me a particular perspective so when i intersect with the people that are doing similar things and things that i've done as an independent i can provide a perspective i can provide some strategy that's that's where i wanted to take you know what i learned and what i was doing to that to that level uh, frank okay go ahead luke uh i was just gonna ask you frank you were talking about having fun in the old days and i just wanted to know what was it like working with Chris? Is is was he a nightmare back then? What was it like? <laughs> nah, man, nah, Chris. I, why does he have a reputation for being difficult? No. <laughs> yes, he has. Uh, yes, yes, yes. I will go on record. Yes, <laughs> no. yes. Lawrence Los no. will say yes, yes. <laughs> Listen, Frank. Sometimes Chris will kind of go off on a tangent, and it'll uh, be about Sonic rings or something, and we will or Lo Lola Bunny or some shit uh, that yeah, Frank is. We're not going to talk to Frank Lola about. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so, I yeah, that one. so <laughs> listen, I, I Chris has always been uh, a okay in my book. He's an interesting character. He's a very interesting <laughs> character to me. He's funny. He's interesting. His mother. I mean, he's you know. I don't know. He's like a. I don't know. I I never <laughs> met someone quite like. Quite like Chris. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. Yeah, yeah. Frank, you know, and I mean that in a super positive way. Like, yo, think about his varied skills. Like, he wants to be a fucking stand-up comic. He's over here, you know, what I mean, designing streetwear and, you know, making ugly backpacks. Like, yeah, so <laughs> Frank, that's why we brought you on here. That's what we want to hear, man. Yes, yes, let's do it. Oh shit, that's hilarious. Uh, uh, Frank, we had a we had an incident last week where uh, Chris was trying to get uh, seltzer on like there was like this spin drift like seltzer that was like exclusive to their website. He tried to get him. It didn't go well. And uh, now he's trying to become a brand ambassador. Could you sign off on his <laughs> brand ambassador? Wait, hold on. Let me explain it a little. Yeah, better, please explain it. So I. We're in like a drop culture now. I think you if I if you just let me sort of kind of explain, you'll agree where there's a lot of things where it's like we're going to have the Supreme model where we're going to make like 20 to 50 of this. It doesn't matter what kind of company it is. We're going to drop it at a certain time and whoever there gets it, whoever doesn't don't. This is company Spindrift. I really like it's seltzer. You know, my girl kind of put me on a seltzer th going through comedy. Like sometimes you have to buy a drink in order to perform. You had to buy seltzer. It's the cheapest one. So I became like a seltzer guy over time. 
you know, I'm, I never hit on sneakers. I never hit on anything. Like I have to be handed a sneaker in order to like have it. You know what I mean? You being one of the people that's done that for me in the past, I'm, I can't even get seltzer, bro. I signed up for this thing where it's like, if you get here at noon, you could try the new lemonade seltzer. I was like, bro, I'm in. Cause it's like a real lemonade or whatever. 1204. It's I can't, I'm gone, bro. I got an email saying like you toast, you missed it. So basically, are you trying to buy it or what yeah, are you trying, are you trying to purchase it? Oh, purchase, I see. bro, with with U.S. currency. Yes. Oh, I see. I thought you were trying to uh, angle yourself as like a seltzer. You know well, what I mean? Someone... This is this was our idea. We angle him as the spindrift guy now. <laughs> you know, it's the what, only way he's spindrift? ever going to win anything. <laughs> That's spindrift the brand is, name, the seltzer brand. Oh, I see. I see. I see. We're going to have him peddling seltzers, but we need cosigns. <laughs> So will you co-sign it? Yeah, him? yeah. I mean, he seems to have a passion for seltzer and lemonade, <laughs> and that should really, really got him going the lemonade part. You know? um, there you go. Oh, you ever had lemonade seltzer, Frank? It's kind of tight. I'm not a salsa guy. It's just kind of bitter. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right? Like all the yeah, comics. Not... Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. True. <laughs> Frank. <laughs> that was I, a different I... kind of laugh, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. You called me out. Yeah, I, I wanted to Frank I, real quick. I don't know how much time we have left, but I did. I had a, like another question for you, man, about like you like you said, you were part of an era. You said, you know, the mid 2000s. And what was your start like, you know, in, in Massachusetts and, you know, and like what got you inspired into like footwear and streetwear and all this stuff, man? You know. My city, right, my growing up, growing up in my city at the time that I grew up, um, it was just one of the moments, man. It was like one of the moments where these things were coming into, you know, coming onto our radar, right? Um, mm-hmm. With music and with, you know, and obviously the, the 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 way information flowed was a little different. I'm talking about, you know, early '90s and and, and you know, um, even even back into '80. I mean, you know, I'm 43, so you know, '88, '89. I'm, I'm maybe fifth and sixth grade, you know. Um, even back then, I was really caught by you know, where sneakers and street fashion and music and shit intersected. Like, it was just really exciting to me. You know, um, there was a lot of kids that played ball. There was a lot of kids that did this and that. And while I dabbled because I'm in the hood, I'm running around, I was really drawn to music and magazines and graffiti and that whole thing. Mm -hmm. And with that comes a uniform. You know what I'm saying? Like, with that comes a uniform and... um, you know, in the search for these for these things, right, that are not made for us, you know, army clothes and hockey jerseys and 40 belows and North Face, like these things, it, you know, they weren't at Eblins. There was no, you know, expressions. I'm, I'm naming some stores in my in New England region where I'm at, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But it wasn't like, you know, Jimmy Jazz where they did, they put all the shit together in one store. Um, it was just a different era and we were just driven by that, you know? So growing up, music and fashion i was just super high, hyper aware so um it's always been a part of my life and then when i realized you know in 2005 is you know and i, I know chris mentioned, mentioned it i'm not sure if it was off mic off camera um but you know i joined a weekly drop podcast which is really i, I mean i'm assuming is it the first podcast about any of this kind of shit right i, I believe mean, it had to be on it record yeah podcasts like services yeah you know um, and when I when I met the guys Jeff Carvello and, and Rob Hepler who who launched the podcast, Hi Snobody. yeah, Jeff's at High Snobody now, and um, and Rob's on the West Coast. Mm-hmm. Um, when I realized that the shit that I thought was regular everyday shit for me, you know what I mean? I'm talking about just you know just my life, things that I my interests, my passions, you know, just cu- culminated into this personality into this perspective you know i've been i've been dealing with this i've been you know and when i realized that that provided a voice that was valuable a pov that was valuable mm-hmm. it blew my mind you know what i mean it's like yo i can go get five of my friends from my block <laughs> you know what i'm saying and we could you know like but you know it it, it seemed to be um there, there was just something happening in the air where my regular life my passion um had value it was bugged out. It's like it met me because I, I was down and out. My little brother died in a car accident. You know, I was depressed. And when I met these guys, I was kind of coming up out of my funk and it gave me something to 
grasp at. And when I realized that, yo, just me, myself, just what I like and what I love is 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 uh, considered like a, a skill set in a way. Mm-hmm. You know, it just really, it really drove me. And that's why when you guys asked about, you know, working at a company that, you know, that's a part of it, right? It, it drove, it, it, it was driving me to continue to find the next iteration, what I'm going to do, what's the next thing to do, because I don't want to do the same thing all the time, you know what I mean? I want to continue to grow and, and, and find new ways to express, and, you know, this game, this scene, the sneaker thing, this streetwear thing that was weird that was happening, you know, when I first came into it, it was like, what is this? It shouldn't even make no sense. It really gave me an opportunity to, to, to grow. Um, and that, and it's as simple as that, man. I was I was down and out trying to figure out what was next, and you know, this gave me an opportunity. When I say this, I mean sneakers. I mean you know footwear, you know streetwear. You know what I mean? Activewear, all that shit. You know, we mix that all that shit up at Concepts. It was one of the first stores that really had a a, a curation, a product like that, and it, and, it, and it revolutionized everything. And it took a lot of us with it. You know. Now. Yeah. I'm sorry. I don't, Chris. I'm sorry not to cut you off or anything. But Frank, you got you say you had a 24 year old daughter. How much has how much uh, influence have you like? How much have you influenced her in streetwear and sneakers, or is this one of those things she was like, "Fuck it, I love the game and and I love it." No, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't do that in my crib. That's dangerous. You know what I mean? Like I, I came up in a in a you know in a, in a neighborhood in the era that I, you know I seen I seen the downside of brand obsession. You know so. I didn't leverage my access for my kids and, you know, and I like that. I got them things and, and, you know, but it, it was never like we weren't taking fucking family pictures all with Jordans on. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. That shit ain't, ain't going down. And at the same time, I didn't want to push my personality onto my kids. Let them be who they're going to be. You know, so my daughter went to Leslie University art program. She's an art, you know, kid. So she has taste and she, you know, we get her things and this thing, but she's not like a reflection of me. You know, um, I think the part she got from me was seeing that creativity, seeing that being a designer or being creative or be, you know, just being an artist in general, that there's a way to, to, to build a life and build a career on that. So I think that's the part she absorbed the most. Obviously, everybody in my house gets busy. Everybody got shoes. Everybody got things. Because if I was a baker, everybody be fat. You know what I mean? Like, it's just be <laughs> part of it. Like, it's always about, I'm always bringing home bagels. Um but, you know, it, it, I, it was important for my kids to have their own personalities, you know, and, and I didn't want to, um, you know, a lot of it too, man, I was, I was in and around customers a lot in the early days because I was at Concepts, you know, sneaker lines and stuff. And, you know, I, I was just aware at what, what this, un, you know, <laughs> this obsession can do to kids, how, how crazy it can, it can make people, how, you know, and I, I don't mean that disrespectfully, I'm more, more saying how how the passion to want something that they can't get drives people to do things, you know? So I was just very mindful of that. I want my kids to be good people. You know what I'm saying? They grew up to be good people and yeah, they got some taste here and there, but um, we never indulged like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. Get with that. Um, I think we're probably around the time. I don't want to hold you, Frank. Uh, Got you for a half hour. I know you got shit to probably do, but um, one last thing, if you don't mind, we've been kind of playing this, uh, this game, I guess. Basically, are you familiar with the Flyees, the new Nike Flyees technology that came out recently? Is that the one where the the shoe goes on and, and closes without? Yeah. You know, just, mm-hmm. Yep. 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 So, yep. Um, you know, there was sort of like this internal debate about. Um, are, you're also familiar with the four the Yeezy four fifties. Which one is that? That's the one where it kind of, the sole kind of comes up in streaks, sort of it's like it, dumplings. Yeah, it kind yes. of looks like a dumpling. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so these are both two very unique yeah, sneakers. It's, it's funny. It's funny you say dumpling, and then I say, oh, that one. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Chris said it something? like two weeks ago on the podcast, and it hurt me, but I don't, like he was right. It's, it hurts. Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, yep, that one. Got it. Visual. <laughs> So, yeah, these two shoes come from very different worlds. And we sort of like we're talking about like which one we would rather wear now, just like in in this hypothetical situation, say these are the only two shoes that are going to exist for the rest of time. uh, But you had to pick one. Which shoe would you wear going forward? Well, disclaimer, I work for Adidas Group. So this is a fictional scenario. Very (laughs) fictional. Very (laughs) fictional. All the thoughts um, are hypothetical and on your, you know, we're separate from the companies right now. You know what I mean? We're just we're just a hypothetical situation. Just dropped your way. That's it. 
Yeah, that's all. Um, definitely the fly ease. Are you crazy? Mm, hey, like, what I, are we doing here? Like, yeah, why, that's what why? I'm because, saying, Frank. Like, what, what are we, are doing, we here? doing here? I don't need to tie my shoe. Like, come <laughs> on, man. What did I, yeah, all right, man. Frank, you, you've, yeah. you, you know, if you're noticing Lawrence's silence, it's for a reason. Frank, now, I'm Lawrence, gonna say, listen, bro, listen, bro, I get it. I get it. Listen, you 35, you still, you still styling on them. You still have, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I get it. I get it. I just, I get, I get it. But I'm saying for me, if I can not tie my shoe, to me, that's the that's the innovation I'm looking for. Like the dumpling and all that. Like I know that it is it is a very much like shoe, but I leave it. I, I will leave a pair available for y'all um, because Frank, man, getting my shoe on and off without lacing it sounds pretty sweet. I'm Frank. I'm gonna say this. All right, this whole interview, I'm like, man, I fuck with Frank Frank the Butcher. Like I love this dude. This dude. Until and now. Then, until and, now. And, then you, and then you gonna sit here and tell me <laughs> you gonna take them fly e's, <laughs> bro? What are you doing right there? You see them four fifties, right? Them joints. Something about them I really like. But you know what, Frank? You yeah, because do you like dumplings? There's an association. <laughs> it's, like a, it's like camel. Remember when camel cigarette cartoons? They were like, yo, like there's a there's a weird thing happening. Yeah, you remember this this controversy when Camel Cigarettes had a cartoon and they thought it was the way it was designed. It was like pulling women in because of the right. I'm just saying, there's an association. <laughs> you like dumplings. You like those. Things. Lawrence and it's, likes dumplings. And it's all good. Uh, it's listen, all by good. law, I'm supposed to like the 450s. So I get it. <laughs> I get it. Oh man. Oh well, those thank you, Frank. Come on, but no, hold on one second. Hold on. Come on, those shoes, <laughs> come on bro. I mean. You know what I'm saying, dogs. Like, you know what I mean? You you, gonna have, you have genie feet all the time. Like, that's all you want to do. Frank, listen, I, there was something about those, like you said, that just kind of drew me into the the Yeezy model. And I'm not like, you know, I I, I love certain Yeezys, but those kind of touch my soul in some way. I can't explain. Yo, but... God, yo, God bless y'all, yo. God bless y'all. <laughs> touched your stomach. God bless y'all. Yeah, no, no, no. It's it's like there's still like a there's still like a twinkle in your eye. You know what I'm saying? Like it is. You know? Like it I is. appreciate that. Like yo, there's something about that shoe. Like come on, dogs. That's the 10th version. You know what I'm saying? There's something about that shoe. Like it... no, it's I but I can appreciate the, the passion, you know. Uh, but there's nothing about that shoe, Lawrence. You know that. Like, you know that, shit. that shit does nothing special. The other shoe got innovation. You know what I'm saying? No, I I, I understand that. I, I kind of I'm on your side with that a little bit. So <laughs> okay, well I, I I I won Lawrence back. Cool. Yeah, he wasn't hearing me at all. He was looking at me with a dead face, going like, "Yeah, whatever you say, Chris. Sure. Uh huh. Yup." <laughs> Why did you pick that shoe, Chris? Is it for the innovation? Yeah, innovation. I mean, like always on this, it you know, a lot of the times when we like, talk about stuff, I'm always from like the design perspective. And that to me was like what you said, the innovative part. And like, you know, there is something to say about like the tooling and probably the process they went to get that wrap around the shoe and how it went with the netting or whatever. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. that that fly ease and also Nike's model about applying that to other models. You know what I mean? Like Yeezy doesn't really have a platform yet to uh, touch like Adidas sneakers. Like he's not going to touch a forum. You know what I mean? He may make something that looked like a forum, but it's still going to be a Yeezy. Um, Nike can be going to be able to take that technology and apply them to all the other shit. So like, you know, I proposed the idea of like, what was that with a three? You know, Lawrence was like, get the fuck out my face. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> but those are the fun, fun conversations I have in my head with me. And like, I would have it with you and stuff. You know what I mean? So like, that's kind of well, like what why does I Luke that. think? What does Luke think? What's I, Luke's thoughts? I think in the way of an Asian, the average Asian consumer and the average Asian consumer consumer loves these shoes, loves Supreme Mics. Loves everything about yeah, that. You bought, yo, how, how much did that mic cost? Listen, don't, Frank, don't worry about that. All right. How many years of oh, experience? No, 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 no. How, how long bad, did it take no, to get the, 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 the city, no. the key to the city? Listen, That's all listen, that. listen, how long I did that take? Listen, I did not mean to poke at you. I was just no. really wondering what the retail cost is. I don't, whatever you bought. It was too, it was what, too much, much, Frank. <laughs> no, it what was, was like the retail on that? It was like 300 after tax. It was the worst. <laughs> did you buy it from the site or did you buy it like from a site, you know, from No, from... no, my friend my friend picked it up. He he got it on he was online for it and he got it for me. Okay. So, a I mean, $300 uh, mic. But you can't deny the drip, Frank. <laughs> can't Look at the drip. You yeah, but you it. even but yo, you and and, and then you don't you going to hold it like <laughs> you know what I mean? I perform with this sometimes when I do comedy. It's real you know, off-putting for people. I saw that's Clark. Amazing. I saw Clark Kent DJing on Instagram yeah. Live the other Clark night, and he had, 
he got one and he didn't even, he wasn't holding it. It was fucking, you know, in the air. So that, you know what? That's Luke, true. I think I look, I think it's more of a stunt, right? If you got that shit in the in the thing, in the uh-huh. in the you know, in the stand, right? And then you got it tucked like bottom frame. <laughs> so you kind of see the E or, or what where is it? The S, the S start at the top. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, see <laughs> right there, that's like, oh word, Luke is doing it. But when you open it like Brian Gumpel, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Tuck it, like look, move it out the frame a little. Let's get this right before I bounce. But get a little, get a little shine. Get the S in there. Yeah, yeah. Get the lighting right. The lighting. You know what I mean? Yo, Frank is toasting you right now. No, come it. on. See that? See to me right there. That's that's like when you don't have the label on your shirt. Like oh shit. Like oh I peep. I peeped the brand. I didn't. Uh, right there. That's it right there. Damn. Love yeah, it. leave it right there, bro. Thanks, Frank. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, always a pleasure. I'm sorry always a pleasure. Late. No, you're oh, perfect, man. Um, I just want to make sure people on the w- on your way out follow you uh, and uh, see the things that you want them to see. I'm excited to see what you're doing with Public Peace Works. Um, I know that's your little passion project that I've like, you know, sprinkled in help here and there, but that's your brainchild. Thank You've been you. working on it for a while. Um, I love that shit. You always got something on the side going, but like, so if anyone wanted to find any of these things, where could they go? Like, you know, maybe Instagram or something. Um. Yeah. You know, Frank the Butcher on Instagram. You know, it's just a pleasure chatting to y'all. I don't. I'm not trying to sell nobody nothing. You know what? Go on iTunes or go on your music services. Look up Frank the Butcher. I got a couple albums out there. I just. Oh uh, yep. Yeah, I just dropped something with a, a rapper Aldo from the Bronx. That's really good. I dropped something with my man from Worcester, Ari, in the instrumental version of the album. Nova Kane is up now. Um, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with UFO Feev. I got a, a project with him coming up soon. Oh, dope. just having fun, you know, just having fun, making beats, living life. You know, That's it, man. Wearing, wearing Birkenstocks and shit. <laughs> Hell yeah, bro. <laughs> Frank, man, thank you so much, man, for real, man. It's been a Thank blast. you, guys. Yeah, thanks, thank you. Frank. Appreciate it. Have All a right, great buddy. night, guys. All right. I'll talk Peace. to you later, bro. Peace. Yes, sir. Peace. Peace.